Good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome to an Instant React podcast. Tennessee somehow miraculously finds a way to win the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl and what was just a almost bizarre game, Jesse, and Austin joins uh, me here. But with, it was it kind of epitomized the Tennessee season, I guess, when you, when you look at it. It was kind of Tennessee season in a nutshell, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, they, they, they choked themselves in the middle eight of this game. I mean, they should have been dominating in the first half. They were dominating the line of scrimmage, uh, but not on the scoreboard. You come up empty after Ramel, the big pass to Ramel Keaton. You get nothing out of that red zone drive. J.G. misses a couple throws. You didn't have to settle for a field goal on another red zone drive because of some poor uh, execution. All of a sudden, Indiana you know, has an opportunity, frankly, to take the lead. If they don't screw it up, they get a first and goal from the seven. Terrible clock management. Yeah, terrible clock management by Tom Allen there. Ends up spiking it instead of getting a timeout immediately with eight seconds and a play to the end zone. So the balls go up 6-3. You're like, all right, you know, do they kind of look at some stuff? Does Cheney kind of say, hey, why don't we attack underneath a little bit if Indiana's constantly playing all this two high safeties and double teaming? You know Callaway and and eventually Palmer and Jennings on the perimeter. They did not do that until desperation time. Indiana comes out in the second half and two quick, you know, one quick drive. They can't stop Ramsey. Uh, basically, just running, you know, little little uh, schoolyard breakdown plays. They score a touchdown. JG throw the pick six. It, it, the Boo Birds are out. The yo yo and starts at quarterback, and yet. Just like the one and four start, the team showed their resolve. They come back, and and uh, that Indiana defense that looked, you know, softer than applesauce early in the game ended up proving to be that in the late in the second half when Tennessee gets two quick touchdowns in the final four and a half minutes. This game had everything terrible in it for the first like three and a half quarters. Tennessee gets three red zone trips in the first half. They get six points out of it. They went four passes in a row. Looked like butching them down there the swamp. In 2017, incomplete, 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 incomplete. I probably did five, um, but I mean, it, you had just a bunch of nothing. And Tennessee had, had, I mean, for the longest time, actually, Indiana didn't even cross midfield on their own until the second half. Like right. JG's pick allowed them to cross it in the first half. They gave them the first three points, and so. It was a bizarre game uh, on a lot of different levels. The all, you know, second team all conference kicker for Indiana misses an extra point. You know, uh, and then that ends up being the difference in the game. Um, you know, it, it wasn't pretty, but Tennessee, much like the rest of the year, that wasn't pretty. They found a way to win a, 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 a gutsy one down the stretch. It's it, it's it's just it's it's remarkable that they found a way to win. Look, this is not going to go down in the annuals as one of the great bowl. You know, victories or maybe one of the best, you know, best played bowls by any means. Yet it'll go down in history as the the onside kick heard round ball land for a while. Um, didn't make a lot of sense to kick an onside kick there, uh, but because you had three timeouts, conventional wisdom said, you, you know, you kick that thing deep, Jesse. But when you go back and look at it. Indiana had a huge void. The seas parted. I mean, there was nobody there, and so it was it was there. But it's the it's the ten yard and two inch onside kick. I mean, I don't know if Eric Gray knew where he was on the field. Really knew where he was on the field. Afterwards, but he, it's about he, two he, inches. From afterwards, making it. afterwards, he said multiple times he was just glad the ball went ten yards. And and Jeremy said it too. You know the way Indiana lined up. Quote: They didn't really have a chance. And and that you know in a game where I think both staffs made mistakes, that ended up being the trump card. Jeremy, because Jeremy, Jeremy was not great with clock management. I think some of the, you know, he also joked after the game, which you you, you do when you win. You're not going to say it when you lose, but that he joked, you know, he had a, a ton of play calls he wanted to call after the play was already over for the first three quarters of the game, which on I think offense. on offense, which I think a lot of Tennessee fans kind of felt the same way in some of the frustrations with, with what Jim and, and and that staff had put together game plan wise. But the onside kick, I mean, it was executed to perfection. Paxton Brooks, again, shanked the punt, but he put that exactly where he needed to. Uh, it seemed to surprise half the team, too, from Garantano to Henry T to Trey Smith. None of those guys had a, had a clue it was coming. Uh, but it, you know, was able to kind of continue to galvanize this comeback, and, and it proved to be the difference. Yeah, Kevin Sheer, that's his play as a special teams coordinator. That's a, that's a kick he put in 
and that's something Braxton Brooks had been working on. They did you get did, the name hubs? Um, it's it's bump right, uh, but I, I, Brent Samaglia wants to name it like the I don't know Paxson something or the Brooks. I, he wanted to rename it, but it's called bump right. Is, is the deal? Kevin Share ready to down or headset down to Paxson Brooks. Get your mind right because we're going to run bump right. If we score, whenever we score, we're going to run bump right. Austin. He hit it as pure as you could hit, to borrow one of your golf analogies. He grooved that as pure as a driver or a sand wedge to within a couple of inches or making a long, whatever you want to call it, he grooved it perfectly. He got up and down on the last <laughs> hole. That's what he did. He chipped one up into the leather. And and and, and Eric Gray, you're right. I mean, <laughs> that, you know, that, as much as Eric Gray says, you know, I've repped it 500 times and all this stuff, as an offensive guy who's trained to catch passes and stuff, when you know that that 10 yards is coming, it's hard not to just reach up there and grab it because you know you're going to have a shot for, you know, you don't want to get blindsided and all of a sudden it pops free and, you know, the other team recovers. Kudos to him for being patient with it and, and let it get 10 yards, um, you know. And, then you know, Kevin Shearer, you know, and it, you know, heck, man. I mean, the guy was demoted last year and demoted to special teams coordinator. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, you know, it's not like it's the Sugar Bowl or the Orange Bowl, but for this program to get to finish this season off with another win and doing it the way they did it, you know, kudos to him, kudos to you know the the whole staff, and you know they kind of just again found a way. Well, and it, and it goes back to again, there's the euphoria of winning, okay? Because this team's got so much grit about them. Okay, say whatever you want to say about it. They've got grit because they should have they should have folded it in. Nobody would have, I mean, people would have under, not understood have been happy, but been like, yeah, okay, they're done with the bad September and everything. They never bickered. They never folded a tenth in. They kept finding ways to win. They've got tons of grit. They found a way to win tonight. But at the same time, too, there's just so many, just so many head-scratcher deals. Like, you got, that first, you got that first red zone series where you're at first and five, or first and goal at the five or the six, whatever it is, and you throw it. Then you come down here on the drive that you score to get within six points, and, and you run Crouch, and he hits his head on the goalpost. I mean, like, every Tennessee fan is like, why did you run that one in the first quarter? Because you probably would have scored that, the way that you did. So it, it's almost like – Well, it's also – and I mean, every – I mean, AP and I looked at each other at the first play of the third quarter. First, Tennessee's first possession, so they're down. First possession, I say, I say, all right, they're, they're, there's no way they're not going to try to force the ball. And, and what did I right say? Here. What did I say? D you better watch where you force a pass, because I, I said you know. And he, he said they're going to do it, and I said yeah, and, and it's going. They're going no, they're, it's coming. And I mean like who didn't see it coming? I mean come on. And well, the, the ball was five yards behind. Like, the problem with that one was it was a if terrible he throws throw. it out. It's got a chance to be completed. He threw it late and five yards behind. It was a terrible throw. I but mean, he, JG, JG again. I mean he had some just mystifying throws tonight. AP, AP and I looked at each other in the press box on a throw in the first half that was completed. The throw that Callaway jumped up and plucked the ball out of the air. I swear, you see a replay from two different angles. You think that ball supposed to be? You think that JG's throwing the ball to Josh Palmer, and it might have been intercepted, and Callaway just runs underneath the route. I mean, it was uh, a, a pretty incredible, um, you know, play by Callaway, and just kind of a microcosm of just the bizarreness of the night. But then he throws the late pass that's completed to Palmer, where he gets just absolutely destroyed on a blitz. He stays in there and delivers that one. That's that's the maddening yin yang that that comes with with Jared, and that was the the yin yang of, of this game uh, when, when you look at it all. D defensively, I, I thought you know they lost their rhythm, and, and kudos to the Indiana staff. They made some nice adjustments at the half that affected Tennessee's pass rush. I thought Henry T was as good as he's been all year long, though. I, I thought he was really he good was all he was year really long. good, but I much better in coverage. Better as a blitzer. I thought he played well. Well, you know, for all the talk of, you know, the the core group of seniors, you know, I thought tonight was much more about the the core group of freshmen. I mean, when you look and Roman Harrison gets a sack and Henry's all over the field. McCullough had, had some really nice plays. I know we got beat there, you know, late after Tennessee had that go-ahead score. But he also made a play down there when Indiana was driving that forced Indiana to kick a field goal. You know, Jesse, he stepped up and you said, you know, I said that was a huge play. And he goes, you're right, that was a really nice play because if, if he doesn't step up, 
that tight ends, you know, probably walking in for a touchdown or at least getting a first down to extend the drive even more. You know, I mean, there are other freshmen that honestly, you know, made some plays tonight. Ramel Keaton early in the game had a couple of nice grabs. So for all the talk of, of you know, the Jawans and Batulis, and those guys were hugely important, I thought tonight, you know, was a nice kind of baton pass to this to this young group that's meant a lot. Just to, and It's not meant as much, but they, they've played as, as big a bigger role as the seniors in my mind in a lot of ways because I think the juniors and sophomores have not been as good as the freshman and senior class. I, I want to ask, I want to ask this, look, it's Indiana, I get it, they're not a great team, but th- th- has Kevon Bennett, and he made a couple plays tonight, showed up with a, tackle for, a couple of tackles for loss, th- does he make, should he make Tennessee fans feel a little better about that outside position? I mean, because there's, look, they've got depth issues there, but, but he's, He's kind of been a guy who's continued to be a mainstay. I thought he, I thought he made a couple plays again tonight, and then we had a DeAndre Johnson sighting. He where, did. Where did, that, where did that come from? Well, fr- I mean, frankly, I actually thought the defense as a whole played really well. I mean, you could name a bunch of guys well, sure. other than jumping I mean, off sixty-nine the, uh, yeah, yards in the first uh, half. Other than jumping off sides four times on third down, you know, I mean, I, I thought the second. I mean, this part of the reason Ramsey was able to scramble and make some of those schoolyard plays was because the secondary was just blanketing WAP. You know, the, the, the failure had not, really had no room to operate. They did a nice job uh, on, on the other uh, perimeter receiver. I know the tight end made some plays, but he got dinged up a couple times. I thought the defense, uh, by and large, Bennett did show up. I mean, he made a couple plays, had a huge stop on that reverse. Um, that that kept Tennessee in the game, obviously, when the, when they kept you know shooting themselves in the foot in the red zone. But the future's bright on that side of the ball with guys like Kayvon Bennett, obviously Henry T. McCullough uh, played well tonight. They're certainly going to miss. I mean, Daryl Taylor was big off the edge. He, he had a big sack. Um, you know, Indiana. It, it, you could tell when Batuli was not on the field when he got his eye poked as well. You know, so they're obviously replacing those seniors is going to be difficult, but some other guys absolutely stepped up. And I agree with you 100%. I thought the freshmen tonight, I thought you could see the benefit of bowl practice for the freshmen tonight. I thought McCullough was more comfortable. Eric Gray picked off where he, you know, picked up where he had left off. You know, when you mentioned those, Ramel Keaton clearly benefited from the time going back to some fundamentals, working on some things. Well, and they're going to have to. I mean, in, in, in reality, DeAndre Johnson is going to have to continue to improve. I mean, you're going to have to see some some market growth, you know, across the board from some of these guys. They don't have to have the kind of turnaround that Nigel Warrior had going from kind of an afterthought and just a name to being an All SEC player. But they but they've got to find guys that can give them something. And and, and maybe tonight was the, a nice step for DeAndre Johnson. You know, you're you're right about you know you know Bennett. He's he he's been coming along slowly all year, but maybe he is the answer with another year of development, another spring, another year in the weight room. You know, it, it you know maybe JJ Peterson the light does come on. Yeah, you know, who knows? We'll yeah. see. Right. Well, well, there's plenty of that to work on, plenty of that to talk about and discuss moving forward. Getting back simply to tonight as we wrap. Yeah, it up Yeah, I mean, here. even because my my comment to that would be even. I mean, I, I'm a big guy that I think these bowl games are kind of in a vacuum. And, and so Truly tonight, are. those guys played well, and it was enough for Tennessee to win a game that Tennessee really wanted to win. Jeremy Pruitt says afterwards, you know, this is going to be the decade of the balls or whatever. We'll see, but I certainly think we felt it this whole week, Hubs, that this game meant something to this team. Now, again, they looked hungover at times in terms of just lack of execution, uh, you know, just some some – uh, poor, I think, adjustments by the staff, well, but they didn't quit. Yeah, clock man. But they, but they, but you know, the same thing that's been that, that they've done all season is they didn't quit. Right. And that that was a difference. Owen four seventy one before this game, first team all season, first FBS team all season to come back from thirteen points in under five minutes. Remarkable. All right, last question. We wrap it up. There, there's probably some ball fans out there that turn the TV off. Okay. You know, when, when they're, Pruitt said not a van left, but apparently Virginia Ball or somebody on our site left, and so, the GQ is giving them hell. <laughs> so they're da- they're down thirteen. Okay, you're late late in the fourth quarter. Uh, he's he's going to catch it for a long time. Sorry, Virginia Ball. <laughs> is it Virginia Ball? But, but here's my thing: if if if, if Vol fan wakes up and they see that they won, and the question is, how in the world, how would you succinctly say to a Tennessee fan who missed it? 
that Tennessee won this football game? I would say Jer JG made some plays to Eric Gray. They scored quickly. Jeremy Pruitt made a gutsy call to call an onside kick. They got it. They scored immediately. And that was not exactly it. The irony is, is that Tennessee <laughs> had the ball one foot away from getting a first down and then again shot themselves in a foot with a penalty, so they had to get a stop. But the defense came up large, and that was the game. I would say the better team won, but Tennessee absolutely stole one late. You know, I mean, that, you know, you go back. I mean, the, the stat, the stat that Jesse just said is correct. There's a reason that teams that were down 13 were over the last 471 tries. And these things even out too. Tennessee had a 99.6 win probability at B, versus BYU, and they were the better team that day. Yeah. And lost. They even. It's going to even out over the course of time. That that that's why math is what it is, and that's why people take you know these advanced analytics so seriously because ultimately that they're going to even out and a game that tennessee should have had a huge lead in the first half and didn't and a game where it looked like tennessee <laughs> was going to get blown out or get you know pretty much handled in the fourth quarter for a big coronation for indiana it didn't happen somehow tennessee won their sixth straight and fapped up kept off what was a crazy football season we have continued coverage and plenty of coverage at volquest.com that's going to do it for this instant react podcast for austin price and Jesse Sampton, I'm Brent Hubbs. Thanks for joining us.